Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me and my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. It's Clemson week. It's a very emotional week for Florida State fans. We barely hung on to beat Boston College. Um, I mean, I'm not really into historical things. We used to dominate Clemson. It doesn't mean anything now. We won the national championship 10 years ago. Doesn't mean anything now. We can't live in the past. We got this game. We have to beat these guys. You know, the time is now. Duke dominated these guys. We have to mimic some of the running plays that Duke did on these guys to be successful. Um, I think it's going to be a very close game because it's a rivalry game. It's an emotional game. Dabo is going to have his guys ready to play against Florida State. He hates losing against Florida State. He hates losing against Florida State. So it's going to be a different level of focus for this Clemson team. And um, I think Florida State is going to get the win, but I think it's going to be like 27-24, something like that, 24-21. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Um, you know, you can't make excuses. You know, a fellow Florida State fan told me that the team was getting over the flu. Blase, blase. You got to, when you, when you put on the the pads, man, you got to be ready to play. If you can't play, you can't play, dog. It's really that simple. Um, I'm not in the business of making excuses for my teams. We either win or we lose. I'm not going to say woulda, shoulda, coulda. You know, you have to go out there and play the game with what you got. Um, You know, this is not Clemson from four or five years ago. This is a different Clemson team. But I still think that we can get the win on these guys. Um. Duke ran a lot of inside plays on these guys. They had a controlled passing game. And they were able to dominate. Let's let's face it, they dominated Clemson. Let's let's just say it. Duke dominated Clemson. But Clemson was still in the game. They just kept making bonehead mistakes. Um I think Clemson's reluctance, Dabo Sweeney's reluctance to embrace NIL and the transfer portal has hindered the program. Um, Because I know Clemson could get some great players. And they've, they've lost a lot of talent to the portal and didn't replenish the talent. So, and talent is the essence of football. You know, at every position. Even at the pro level, talent is the essence of football. You can't win with mediocre players. You can't win with average players. You, you're not going to win national championships, Super Bowls with average players. It's just, it's just not going to happen. You have to have extraordinary to great, or I say great to extraordinary talent. That's just the way the game is. Um. Jordan Travis has to quit doing the dumb stuff that can get you beat in big games, okay? Throwing the ball out of bounds, you know, when you're out of the pocket and nothing's there, it's not a bad play. Taking the sack is not a bad play. Punting on fourth down is not a play. There's not a big play on every play. You can't try to manufacture big plays when it's not there. That's how you lose, That's how we lost the NC State game. Okay, if it's not there, throw it away. There's nothing wrong with a punt. You know, there's with this type of game, there's a game within the game, and that's coaching. Uh, That's field position. That's making smart decisions on third down, on fourth down. Um, A lot of people tend to get caught up in the emotions of ending the losing streak to Clemson, and I'm caught up in it too, but you have to play smart, fundamentally sound football 
and you have to make good decisions. The coaching got exposed last week. Let's just let's just say it. Um, I, I I don't know how else to phrase it. This this these kind of games is where your coaching staff earn their money, not the big games, because I think a lot of these players are gonna be locked in in the big games. I really feel like games like these where you could potentially be looking past this opponent and already put in this game in the win column, those are the games that you lose. And give Boston College all the credit in the world. They came out and they had an excellent strategy. They just didn't have enough time to get the win. And Florida State is the more talented team, but they they were flat. Let's just say it. They were flat. Um I expect a greater effort against Clemson. You know, to me, this this is like a national championship type game. Um, Because this really could propel us to the next level or it can keep us in mediocrity. And, you know, I just hope that the coaching staff is – and pressing upon these players how much this game means to the fans, uh, the alumni, the school, and everybody. You know, we don't want to continuously lose to these guys. Now, I give Clemson all the credit in the world. They've had the better program for the last seven, eight years. Um, they've recruited better. They've, 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 they're the best program in the ACC right now until somebody knocks them off. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that we can do it. Um, but we shouldn't be in this position right now. Um, we can go back and revisit things that happened, you know, 10 years ago. I, I don't want to beat that dead horse. Um, but we shouldn't be in this position where we're losing seven, eight times in a row to Clemson. I just think if if all things are equal, we can get better talent than Clemson. Um, but thanks to Dabo Sweeney, again, I'll say it, his reluctance to embrace the transfer portal and NIL has helped us close the gap between Florida State and Clemson. Um, You know, he wants to do what worked for him to help him get two national championships, and that's recruiting and developing, which is not a bad strategy. But, you know, if you're not, if you're not going, if you go from Deshaun Watson to Trevor Lawrence, you know, there was a Kelly Bryant, uh, Valley in there, you you know, you had two peaks with Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson, but right now I get I'm I'm gonna say you're in a valley with Cade Klubnik. I don't think he's the guy. I felt I felt like DJ could have been the guy, but he he didn't have the same level of talent as far as receivers and tight ends that the previous quarterbacks had. And Watson and Klubnik. So um he's a great he has he has tremendous speed for a quarterback. Let's just say it. They they have tremendous he has tremendous speed for a quarterback. He ran down a DB in the Duke game. So I'm I'm going to I'm just gonna say it right now. Clemson will look at that Boston College tape. And they're going to utilize some of the things that Boston College used to be successful in the game. Now, if you're Florida State and you're not preparing for that. Now, I'm just I'm just a regular fan that works a nine to five and I can see it. I can tell you what they're going to do. Okay. These are paid professional coaches. If they don't spy Klubnik, 
It, it might be a long day. I don't, I don't, I don't fear any of their skill players. Okay, you can tell me all you want about Will Shipley. Um, I like Will Shipley. I like number zero, but none of those guys, none of those guys scare me. Not like Mike Williams or Montavious Bryant or Sammy Watkins or DeAndre Hopkins or um, the, the dude out in Kansas City. I can't think of his name. Uh, none of those guys scare me. ETN, Trevor Lawrence, nobody's on that level. Okay? Defensively, not nothing scares me about this Clemson team. As in, as in, in previous years, previous years, four, four, three, four years ago, I wouldn't even watch the Clemson game because I already knew we were going to get demolished. I think this time around, we got a chance. We got a great chance. It's just which team is going to show up. Um, If I'm Florida State, I run the ball right at these guys. I look at that Duke tape. I feel like we got a better team than Duke. Duke was hungry that night. That's the difference. That's the difference in a lot of football games. Which team is more hungrier? And, you know, I don't I don't know how do you motivate this team because I, I, you can just look at how they carried themselves in that Boston College game, and they've been reading a lot of their own press clippings, their own social media stuff. Everybody's bigging them up. And that's how you get. That's how you get. That's how you lose. Now I'm not down on. I'm not down on Florida State, but I'm just saying, Mike Norvell and staff got to put the heat under these guys. If you if you trying to be, you know, in the promised land at the end of the at the end of the season, nobody's just gonna roll over and play dead for Florida State. Okay, um, a lot of teams still look at Florida State as their their national championship, their Super Bowl. And, you know, it, it would be a tremendous thing to get that feather under your cap to, to, to take Florida State from the, uh, from the land of unbeaten teams. Um, I, look at, I look at Dion, man. I look how he motivates his team before the game, halftime, after the game. I look at stuff like that. I'm not comparing Norvell to Dion, but it's always going to be that comparison, though. Because Dion is Florida State. He helped make Florida State. A lot of what Dion did at Florida State is the reason why Florida State has had success in previous years. So, um, and I, I just think Colorado Florida State is just a rivalry waiting to happen. I just think that's a rivalry waiting to happen. That game has to be made. I mean, I, I think that's that's one of those games that could, you know, turn the axis of this planet. So just from a money perspective, that game has to happen. But I'm not saying Norvell needs to take anything from Dion as far as what he does with his team. But I, I just think Dion is a great example of how to motivate your team. I think. If Dion wasn't the motivator that he was, maybe they don't beat Colorado State. Um, so as far as my boys go, Florida State, I've said this once, I said it a million times, quicker adjustments, quicker in-game adjustments, defensively, offensively, special teams. We got to have it. You You can't, you lose that way. Like I said, Boston College exposed a lot of coaching in this game. Boston College was motivated to play this game. Florida State was not motivated to play this game. They did not want to play this game. Okay, because like I said, you're up 31, was it 10, 31, 10 in the third quarter. You scored no more points in the game. So Boston College shut you out. Right? And, you know, that's unacceptable. You know, if you're holding yourself to a standard, that is unacceptable. Um, like I said, 
the quarterback, Jordan Travis, I'll just go on record right now. I think Shador Sanders is better than him. Just just from this from the respect that if Jordan Travis was in that situation at the end of the game, the Cleveland I mean the Colorado State game, do you think Travis could take us down the field? He's done it before. But Shador has no running game. His offensive line is suspect. You give us Shador Sanders, I think we go we win this thing going, we win the national championship going away. Now, I'm not knocking Jordan Travis. He's come a long way from Boston College. Was it 2019, 2018, whatever it is? He's come a long way from that. And, you know, he's my guy. I'm going to root for him. But we need better decisions from Jordan Travis. If you are about to get sacked, take the sack. Don't throw the ball just in the air for it to be intercepted and ran back or a potential fumble. Just eat the sack, man. Okay? Quit dancing around, running back 15, 20, 25 yards, trying to make a play. Just throw the ball away. If it's not there, throw the ball away. There's nothing wrong with punting and playing defense. You're not going to score on every possession. That's not how football works. Sometimes the defense is going to win. Scrambling around can and making bad decisions can get you beat. And you've done that several times throughout your Florida State career. As a six-year senior, I expect better play from Jordan Travis. I expect better decisions from Jordan Travis. Um, to a Philly, disappointed in that fumble you had. Very disappointed. Um, I expect better. I expect better with ball security. Like I said, it's just like these guys were lackadaisical going into this game. Um. I like Rodney Hill. He runs hard, man. That's the kind of running back we need. And Trey Benson is Trey Benson. This offensive line, there has to be a greater sense of urgency with this offensive line to dominate. There has to be a greater sense of urgency. Now, will they – will they – you know, get up for the Clemson game, I think they will. You know, everybody knows what's at stake here. I don't I don't you would have to live under a rock not to know the the circumstances of your season, your history with Clemson the last several years, not to come out motivated, not to come out ready to win. So I'm you're gonna know within the first minute of the game. You know, whether we're on offense or defense, you're going to know within the first minute. I will know in the first minute of the game if this team came to play or they're just going to roll over and play dead. We're going to know that from the jump. I I know Dabo is going to have these guys 100% hyped up, focused, and ready to come out and try to dominate dominate us like they have the last several years. And you, the coach, Florida State head coach, Mike Norvell, you have to counter that. You have to tell these guys the history. You have to tell them what's on the line. We've taken a back seat to them. And historically, you know, we used to dominate these guys. And they've closed the gap. Um, or they've surpassed us. I shouldn't even say close the gap. They closed the gap and surpassed us. As the, as the best team in this conference and brought their brand, their program, back to national prominence at our expense. You have to take that personal and you have to come out with a sense of urgency and venge, venge, vengeance to win this game. I mean, not only win, but destroy these guys. Take their will. That's what I want. 
I, I don't just want to win. I want to just like when we went in there in 2013 and put 52 on these guys or whatever it was. That's that's the kind of effort that I want. I want I want to embarrass these guys. I want I want the the cameras to pan over to Dabo Sweeney, and just I just want him to just be like he's ready to cry. I love it. You know. Um, so I don't know. I I don't know how else to phrase it. Um, strategy wise, Florida State has to come out and run the football. I would not put this game in the hands of Jordan Travis. I wouldn't. I would not. I would I would lean heavily on the running game. I would I would give Trey Benson 15 to 20 carries. I would give Rodney Hill 15 to 20 carries and um I would do a control passing game. I mean, you got a lot of intangible pieces on this offense with Bell and Tua Feely. Um, I like Tua Feely in the screen game. I like Tua Feely coming out the backfield. Um, so we'll see what Florida State does. This podcast, um. I talk. I can talk about anything I want. It's my podcast. Um, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I mean, you don't have to listen if you don't want to listen. I, you know, what I'm saying. Like I said before, I'm not in this. I'm not doing this to try to be a superstar YouTuber. If it happens, it happens. Or a superstar podcaster. It's just like a hobby, man. It's just I love college football. I love college football more than the NFL. <clears throat> um, I really started following football like in like when I was five years old. Joe Montana. I had got a Joe Montana football for Christmas and the rest is history. And then a few years later, Dion showed up in college at Florida State. And I was just fixated on his talent, um, everything. So I just think that, uh, you know, when you're doing a podcast or a YouTube show and you get these emails from people saying that, you know, you're talking about Colorado and all this other nonsense. You should just switch it to, you know, go Buffalo's podcast. No, Dion, you, you have to. I know Dion has kind of subliminally dismissed Florida State with the graduate comment. I don't care about that. He felt like he should have got the head coaching job. He he's not gonna come out and say that, but I think anybody with half a brain would would surmise that that's how he feels inside. the The powers that be at Florida State didn't want him, and now he's on a mission to show them that they made the wrong decision. I mean, he had to take a different road to get to to Power Five, and it is what it is. He's having success. His his son is 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 a baller. Both of his sons are ballers. And I think if he would have came to Florida State, we could have got both of them. Um so woulda, shoulda, coulda. I mean, I think we're doing all right right now. I think it is it's full it it the it came full circle for both Dion and Florida State. Now we're only three games into this season, and we'll see what happens down the road. But I'm hoping that my guys, Florida State, can be in contention for something special. We got to get past Clemson. And I think at this point, it's more mental than physical. I think 
losing to somebody for seven, eight consecutive years can take a toll on a on a program. Um, most of these players hadn't been around for that <laughs> continuous losing streak, but you know, I I went through a similar thing playing high school football, and trust me, it, it's 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 a mental hurdle. Um, just anything you do in life, if you if you constantly get negative results doing something, it's going to be hard to overcome that mentally. Mentally, you're going to have doubt. So I, I think that's the dynamic that Mike Norvell and staff are battling. The <clears throat> mental um, effects of uh, beating Clemson, the mental toughness to beat Clemson. Um, and, and football is an emotional game. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to play if you're not talented. You know, you can't make it to that level of football and not be talented. They, you know what I'm saying? They don't, you can walk on and you might make the team just from a walk on perspective, but you're probably not going to play. It it, it takes a special talent to play at that level. And that's talent, but it's it's mental also because every level you go up, it gets harder and harder. So. Um, I, I mean, I've talked strategy with, I've talked strategy earlier in this podcast. I, I just, like I said, the main thing for me is the mental part of it. Do you have the mental fortitude to go out there and dominate these guys? That's it for me. I, I think if they can get over that hurdle, Everything else is going to be easy because I think Florida State has the more talented team. We have the better team. It comes down to mental toughness and coaching. Can Mike Norvell and staff put these guys in the right positions to succeed? Do we have the mental toughness, the mental fortitude to go to Clemson and dominate? I think we do. But. Again, I feel like this is a game where it's on the coaches. Um, I, I think more so now <clears throat> than ever. This, this, this is a this is the most important game of Mike Norvell's career to this point because it's Clemson. And it's a chance to end the losing streak. And it's a chance to really bring Florida State back to the top program in the ACC. And it's it's really an opportunity to say, okay, we don't have divisions anymore. Another ACC loss for Clemson almost puts them out of the <clears throat> title game pitcher. Um. Because they lost to Duke in the first game. So, I, it's just so many incentives to, to come out and, you know, leave it all on the field. That, um, I just, um, man, I want this win so bad. I, I got a relative that is a diehard Clemson fan. And even when... Duke beat them. I was, you know, sending him memes and teasing him and talking junk. And he said, well, guess what? Florida State ain't beat us yet. And I I had no rebuttal. You know how much that hurts? You know how much that stings to not have a rebuttal for that comment? It it really, it really chafed me. So we're going to see what happened on Saturday. Um, hope you enjoyed this podcast. I love my, making these shows, man. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. 
I appreciate the support. It's on YouTube. It's on all podcast platforms. As always, go knows.